So today we're gonna to talk about everything I use to film car videos like this. to the Extalgic YouTube channel. I'm Extalgic. We do some pretty crazy epic dumb stuff here, mainly a focus on cars and cinematography. So today, I've been asked to do this kind of video for a number of years and I'm finally doing it. Given it's the holiday season, you can get a lot of this stuff on sale. So we're just gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna show you everything I've used in my current kit to film cars and shoots and everything under the sun for this YouTube channel as well as personal clients. So let's get into it. First is my main camera, my Sony a7 III, which I'm filming on right now. It is my main workhorse. It literally does everything. It's such a great camera. They just dropped this a7 IV, which I'm gonna probably trade this one in on that. But it's a great hybrid camera. It takes great pictures. It does awesome video. I've used this for the last like four years. It has been awesome. The camera is wrapped in a W rig full cage. It's great for protection awesome for attachments. I highly recommend you get a cage for your camera. Obviously filming cars, you need great audio. So I have a shotgun mic from Rode. It's called the Video Mic Go. Very inexpensive and it doesn't need any batteries. It's powered through the camera and I have it wrapped in Rode's dead cap. Next up is the lens that I use for everything dialogue, B-roll, vlogging. It's a wide angle from Zeiss. It's a 16 to 35 f4. It's an awesome lens. You can see it's pretty beat up. I use it for everything. A CPL filter is a must when you shoot cars. This one's from k &F. It's an awesome CPL filter. It cuts glare and reflections. Highly recommend this for your lens. On each side of the cage, I have anchor links from a company called Peak Design. This is an awesome little ecosystem. They're like quick release accessories for your camera so you can quickly clip in. This is a leash for your wrist so that when I'm shooting rollers and stuff and if something happens, I hit a bump and I drop the camera, it'll stay attached to my wrist. It's really, really quick. But when you're not using it for your camera, you can just keep it on your wrist. It has a nifty little magnet in there so it stays attached. So it's on your wrist whenever you need it. You can just take it off, quickly attach, and then grab your camera. On the side of the backpack, I keep both of my mobile tripods. First up is the Joby Gorilla Pod. This is the big boy. It carries the most weight. It's got a ball head on top. This thing has come in handy so many times, oftentimes at racetracks where I can't set up a full-size tripod and I have to stay mobile. This is by far the most versatile tool I have in my entire kit. It can latch on to fences, seats, picnic benches, roll cages. Everything that you can think of is your tripod and I highly recommend getting one. Next up is the Manfrotto Pixie Evo 2. This little thing is also awesome as well. It's got a little switch where you can go completely flat and it sits really close to the ground. Flip it the other way and it's a little bit taller. And here's why this thing is cool. It has these buttons on each leg where you can press and extend each one of the legs so that it sits taller than normal. It's also got a ball head adjusted with this little knob so you can put it any way that you want it even has a full vertical mode. I often use this at racetracks. I'll loosen the ball head and use it for tracking shots on track. It's a very versatile tripod if you get creative with it. I highly recommend picking one of these up. It's much cheaper than the Joby. It's also got a much smaller profile than the Joby so you can make it all compact and put it in the side of your bag. First compartment we'll go through is a hard case. This is where I keep my more sensitive items. First being my lens cleaning kit. This is a Zeiss lens cleaning kit. It comes with an air blower, dust brush, lens cleaning solution, a microphone fiber cloth and 10 moist cleaning wipes. A must have when shooting cars because your lens often gets dirty. Next I keep my USB-C charging cables. These are for the GoPros, the a7 III. I just keep all of them together. Next to that I house my Delkin portable SD card reader. This comes in handy quite often when I'm out on the field and I need to transfer files really quick. In the zipper up top I hold my SanDisk Extreme 500 gigabyte SSD drive. This thing has an IP55 rating, makes it dust proof, water resistant. It's blistering fast and I also edit all my videos off of this. In the top compartment, I keep my Peak Design wrist leash here, just easily accessible. I also have my Sony neck strap that came with the a7 III. I never have used this thing. I don't like neck straps. And also in the zipper up top, I have a 25 foot aux cable. This allows me to extend the microphone to pretty much anywhere I want. If you want to extend the microphone to the back bumper while you're filming on the inside of the car so you can capture exhaust audio. I often extend the microphone to the inside of the car while I'm outside filming rollers so that it doesn't pick up any wind noise. 
Next up is the laptop compartment. In here I hold the Terion rain shield. This allows you to put it over your backpack in inclement weather just so that nothing gets wet. Very high quality feeling piece. I have used it a few times. Obviously I hold my laptop in the laptop case. This one is currently broken, but when it wasn't broken, I did use it to transfer files. It's a model from 2013. That's all it was good for. Next is the quick access hatch on the side. In here there's two Velcro pouches. I keep a USB-C to USB adapter, as well as all my memory cards backups and if I ever need to change one and also SD card adapters. Given this is a quick access hatch, I do keep two different colors of gaffer's tape, white roll and a black roll. Some would argue that if you don't have these in your kit, you're not a professional, but they come in handy. You can literally use them for anything. On the front of the bag, there's these two clips. I usually have like a backup sweater I latch on here or sometimes I'll put my Joby Gorilla Pod there just so it's on the outside of the bag. Inside that hatch, I hold a RAM three-way suction cup. I use this thing in so many different ways. My main use case for this suction mount is to document interior dialogue when I'm driving along and just doing a talking head. Sometimes I mount it to the sunroof. It's a very, very, very strong piece. I trust it with my $3,000 camera on the outside of the car. RAM is a very trusted brand and these suction cups are very strong. I've never had them fail on me. They hold a good suction. Build quality is very solid. In the same compartment, I keep my drone it's a dji mavic mini 2 i have the fly more combo so it comes with a few extra goodies including this carrying case a bunch of extra batteries and some cables and also some extra propellers this particular drone is perfect for me given its size it also weighs under the 250 gram rule which means i can fly this anywhere without a license permitting that the airspace allows it but it's super compact i can keep it in my backpack the carrying case also has a ton of space left in it regardless of everything that went in to it so I can put a lot more stuff inside that carrying case if need be. Next up is the main compartment so unzip the top, lift it open to reveal a zipper pocket on the lid which I keep my MacBook charger in. Also a padded flap which is zippered into place which is very nice touch and where I'm showing you right here is where my main camera would go, my a7 III. In front of the camera I keep this handle which came with the a7 III cage that I have. It's a beautiful piece, machined very well, high quality metal. I often use this attached to my camera when I'm shooting rollers. It gives me a better grip on the camera. I can hold it with one hand. It also allows me to physically put the camera closer to the ground lower vantage point and I also use this in tandem with the Peak Designs leash. Next up is a GoPro suction cup mount. It's pretty self-explanatory. These are very strong. I've had this particular one for a number of years and it's never failed on me. Next up is GoPro's magnetic swivel clip. I love this thing. It's so versatile. It has rubber jaws that can clamp on pretty much anything within its diameter. It's also got a magnetic strip on the back. You can put these on anything magnetic. I've used this a number of times. It's very useful. The shots always come out super rad i can quickly hop out put it on a guardrail drive by come back pick it up easy on easy off great little mount next up is a plethora of gopro attachments and screws and mounts i'm more prone to gopro's quick disconnect buckle mounts they're just easier to come on and off i don't really like to mess with the screws next up is my main gopro a hero 8 black i would say if you have a hero 8 it's probably not justified to upgrade to a 9 or a 10 but the front screen on the new ones is nice i have my gopro hero 8 on the bite mount. I will go ahead and say it for the record, the bite mount is the best GoPro mount ever. This also has a built-in quick clip disconnect. Very useful, very versatile. I use this often. I will never not have this in my kit. Next up is my secondary GoPro. My oldest GoPro is a Hero 4 Black. I don't use this too often, but I will use it in tandem with the Hero 8. If I'm filming something that only has one take, I'll use it. The compartment right above it, I keep every single battery. So all the GoPro Hero 8 batteries, the Hero 4 batteries. In my opinion, you can't have too many GoPro batteries. These things suck, don't last very long. So I just have a bunch of batteries alongside dual chargers. I also have two additional Sony Z batteries for my A7 III. These particular batteries are so good, they last so long I hardly ever need all three in a single shoot. Next up is the backpack itself. It's called the Terion Pro Camera Backpack. It's got these really neat bright orange zipper handles. Also, you can lock the zippers. You can see in this clip real close that you have holes for a lock. It's got really strong buckles in the front and sides, very high quality plastic. You can use these latches for a water bottle or tripods. I have full confidence that nothing will fall out of these straps. Also, like I mentioned earlier, the hard case. The shoulder straps feature a very soft fabric, breathable. They're vented. I've had this backpack on for a number of hours. 
for a shoot and it's very comfortable to wear same treatment goes for the back it's the same soft vented breathable fabric on the shoulder straps on the bottom it features these rubber pads so that whenever you set your backpack down you don't set it down on any gear it sits on these rubber feet flipping the bag all the way on the other end the top hand strap is very strong it's comfortable it's padded this whole bag is constructed very well very good materials the stitching is very high quality the zippers all feel good all the materials on the inside as well the nylon the stitching the zippers the mesh pockets the velcro all feel very high quality the foam dividers can also be arranged however you want they're very thick very protective they also market them as shock proof but very comfortable with storing my gear within them so there you go. That is everything that I use to film my car videos. As you can tell, it's not a lot. It's just the main camera, the big camera, which I pretty much do everything on, a GoPro for action shots for things that I don't feel comfortable filming with this, and a drone. That's pretty much it. Everything else is very minimal. I don't like to travel with a bunch of gear just because you feel inclined to use every single piece of gear that you have. So I keep it simple. I rely on storylines and creativity when I'm out in the field, and these are just the tools I use to execute it. Also, a lot of this stuff is dated. The Hero 8, the Hero 4, the A7 III now. I don't have all of the latest and greatest stuff. This gear does well enough for me. I like to focus more on storyline and this gear is good enough for me. With that being said, every single link to everything you saw in this video will be down in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you feel so inclined to uh, support the channel, thank you in advance. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, with anything, not even just in this video, with cars or, or filming gear or anything like that, leave in the comments, I'll get back to you, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. You will fight it.